Hi there, I am Black Bright and I am broadcasting from the UK and today I decided, I was, I was kind of thinking about what could I do to, um, well I'm not even sure what I was thinking, I was thinking about, you know when people are talking about how black people don't stick together and that they're at each other's throats and they're always criticising each other and they don't really, um, they can't hold down a relationship, they're broken, they're criminals, you know, they're, they're wayward. And I was trying to think to myself, you know, we're there talking about them as a whole and we're not dealing with people as individuals. So I decided to call this video Healing the Wounded because every one of us is wounded in some way or another. When you think of celebrities who you feel have got everything, they've got money, whatever, you find that they're killing themselves, they, they end up broke, they can't hold down a relationship. So regardless, it's not a money thing. There is something at the root of our pasts that's made us wounded. Somebody has let us down, somebody has not been there, somebody's been unreliable, we haven't had that nurturing, we haven't had that love and something has been missing that has created a wound that even in adulthood we cannot heal and we're looking to other people to heal it for us. Now I painted that picture behind me in 1994. When I painted it I didn't have a plan of what I was going to put on canvas, I just started painting whatever it was that I felt. After I finished it I realised that, well I called it ashamed and I, the, the, the nakedness is vulnerability, the fact that she's hiding her head and you can't see her head is she's holding her head down in shame and the fact that the, the woman or the being behind is pointing, it's telling her to get out. Now I also use that painting for excluded because it has the same meaning. There was a time in my life where I was told to leave, to get out and I felt vulnerable and I felt ashamed. And so that was a wound in my life back then. And we all carry wounds regardless of what the wound is. Sometimes we carry wounds because we don't have a father. You know, we have friends who are at school and they might be talking about what they did with their father. And you kind of think, I can't share what I did with my father because my father isn't about. He's either not around and it's worse when they ask you, where is your father? And you can either say, oh, well, I might be seeing him next week or I haven't seen him since I was born or I don't know when I'm going to see him or I've never seen him. And inside that that causes a wound it, because it makes you feel as though a part of you is missing and so many families are like that they reckon 80% of homes are fatherless and it affects ch female children as well it's not just boys because females they're looking for a father the father to protect them to um, be present for them to praise them and to provide for them and they end up with when they don't have a father they end up looking for men to do that for them and they're constantly um, disappointed because the men that they're choosing are just not able to do that and so they they have a wound that they're trying to fill and what you'll find is that uh, the, the majority of people who are broken and I mean I'm sure that's why young boys go into gangs because that is where they see masculinity and the feeling of belonging you know they don't feel a woman and as much as a lot of women have raised boys fantastically you still have those boys who feel as though they feel hurt and betrayed because they don't have a father some of the boys even blame the mother for not having the father. Some fathers, they don't want the children or the, ch the child happened. It's not like usually in the olden days they would plan the child. Now, you know, these 
you know, men and women have sex and the child is born and it just so happens to be born. The man doesn't have no emotional tie a lot of the time. They might like the woman, but the, the, the child has spoiled everything for him. There's no more time for the man and the man gets peed off because he wants attention and he goes off leaving the child. And the thing is, and then a lot of men, which I think is very unfortunate, they use the child to blackmail the mother. They make it look like they want to see the child, but they really want to see the mother. And if the mother's not interested, then they don't see the child. So that child is there with instability. That child is there thinking, my father doesn't love me. He only wants my mum. What's wrong with me? They grow up with a lot of doubt, a lot of inhibitions, a lot of insecurities. And you have parents, you have fathers who are abusive. You have fathers who are unreliable, who are just, you know, pains in the butt, you know, easy, easily angered. You know, they're not nurturing and careless and cold and emotionally unavailable. You have fathers like that. And sometimes if you've got a father like that who maybe drinks too much or is abusive to the mother, the child is better off out of the picture. But what does that child suffer as a result of not having a stable father? That means the choice of that father is with the mother and she hasn't selected well. And she hasn't selected well because maybe she didn't have a father. And so she's made a poor selection, which has in, then in turn affected her son and her daughter. I'm going to have to do a, a, a few um, videos with along this line because you can't do it all in one video but I just wanted to um, make sure that I, you know I, I kind of did this introduction um, first I think it's important that um, if you are feeling pain that you acknowledge it that you don't um, go into denial mode or avoidance mode. A lot of people, they're hurting and they pretend, oh, I'm all right, you know, there's nothing wrong with me because they see feeling emotion as a weakness. So they put up a front and they are hurting regardless of what they're hurting for. People hurt for different reasons. We have expectations of parents, we have expectations, we expect them to be there for us, we expect them to nurture us, and when they're not there, or if we haven't had a nurturing upbringing, you know, you feel, you feel incomplete. And it's like, you know, I often wonder about mixed race children, you know, raised in, with a black mother and a white father. How, what is their sense of belonging? Who do they feel they belong to? Do they feel as though they belong to both? Does society force them to choose? How does that work? What kind of wounds do they carry? We all carry wounds. And it's about how do we go about healing those wounds? First thing really is to recognize what the wound is, not go around in denial. Because until we kind of um, acknowledge what we missed or what we feel we were entitled to and didn't get and not feel embarrassed by that or not feel like a failure because you didn't get what you want or you didn't get the love you thought you deserved. You need to acknowledge that. You need to go back to that point where you started to feel angry with yourself and frustrated with yourself and angry with other people. You have to go back to that place where you stop blaming everybody else for your the way you're feeling now. Because you can blame until the cows come home, but you are responsible for your happiness and your peace of mind. So it is about trying to find out when did you start feeling the way you did? Who do you think betrayed you? Who do you think let you down? Or who do you know betrayed you and let you down? And whether or not it was whether you whether you was a child or an adult, try to trace it back and try to think to yourself and be reasonable. Were you responsible for it, or was it a third party? You had you couldn't do anything about it. And if you couldn't do anything about it, like fathers that leave mothers, or mothers that leave fathers, or both parents that leave children, you know. It's got nothing to do with you. 
You should never take on the responsibility and believe that your parents' misbehaviour is because of you or something that you've done. A lot of parents, they have joy in blaming their kids and saying, oh, if you never, if I didn't have you and blah, blah, blah. It's cruel because they're adults and they had a choice. And then they put that guilt on the child. And the child grows up with that guilt feeling they're responsible for their parents not being together or their parents um, behaving the way they are, their parents drinking. The child takes on that responsibility and they try to do something about it. And invariably, a lot of the time it goes wrong. So we have to get back to the source, even at, as adults. We have to kind of think, what, where was I hurt? I know that when... Um, I went to America and I took my my two daughters with me but then I was in such a vulnerable position because I didn't know whether or not I had a job I didn't know where I was going to live so I sent them back to their father and I thought to myself you know that's fine they're in safe hands but my daughters they they took it so hard I didn't even realize how hard they took it until I came back they felt as though I abandoned them. They would have preferred to have been with me in my struggle. But as parents, I didn't think about that at the time. I didn't think, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to have them there with my struggle. We're going to struggle all together. I didn't think that. I thought to myself, well, I, I can't concentrate on my children while I'm trying to get a job and I'm trying to find a place to live and I'm trying to get my visa sorted out. And it was running out quickly. So my, you know, I bailed out and it took a long time to build up their trust in me. And fortunately, I was able to stay in touch, to show them love, to come back every two, twice a year. And so they didn't feel abandoned, but they still felt hurt. So, you know, a lot of times and they trace that back and whether or not they trace that back. I mean, with me, you know, I didn't grow up with a father and I didn't know my father um, wasn't my father until I was about 16. And you have a lot of people with lots of issues, but it doesn't have to break you. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that anything's wrong with you. It just means that our parents or adults have made mistakes and we've been involved. We, you know, vicariously we've managed to get involved in their mistakes and their misgivings but we cannot blame ourselves for that we cannot blame ourselves for even for the mistakes we've made because we're allowed to make mistakes no one's perfect every one of us is allowed to make mistakes the only thing the only time that it, it gets a bit unreasonable is when you keep making the same mistake over and over and over again because you're supposed to learn from your mistakes but provided you make a couple of mistakes or they're different mistakes it doesn't matter you just try to repair it it's not the end of the world so you don't beat yourself up for it we need to heal our wounds we need to be whole people because until we're whole people we can't help others how can we help others if we've got a wound so it does take time. It's taken me a hell of a lot of time to become a whole being. being you know, it's, and it's about consciousness because, you know, you can live um, day by day without even being consciousness that you're hurt or that, you know, there's a pain or there's something hurting you from years back. You might not even recognize that. But when I recognized it, I was able to kind of, I journal a lot. I used to write, I paint. That's how I got through my, my little challenges. But, you know, there are different ways to deal with it. But the first thing is, is recognizing it, identifying it and identifying the root. Where is that coming from? Why do I feel that way? Who hurt me? Who do I need to address? And even if you can't address, they have this thing called gesto where you pretend it's quite bizarre really but somebody who's hurt you and they're dead or they've got out, gone out of your life or you can't, don't know where they are but you've still got that pain and that anger inside you you get a chair and you sit in front of that chair and you imagine that that person is sitting in that chair you use visualization 
and then you tell that person everything that you want to tell them you get it off your chest and you've got no fear of them coming back of repercussions or anything because it's just you and them in the room and you will you will have a sense of relief at the end of it nothing will happen but it is quite cathartic nothing will happen immediately but you will day by day realize and you you can keep doing that with who how many people have hurt you some people they've been hurt more than once some people attract people who hurt them and so they've got lots of people who hurt them it's okay get a chair talk to each one day by day and and get it off your chest you can swear you can cuss you can do anything you like to that person because it's a you know it's a, you are imagining that that is the person that is the person who hurt you but you can't get at him or you can't get at her so you talk to them and pretend they're there and you get it off your chest and it's a bit like journaling because sometimes if you can't get something off your chest and you don't want to talk to anybody about it and you feel embarrassed you actually can write things down and that can heal the pain it's about getting what's inside out and a lot of us we carry it and it suppresses us and it weighs us down that's what we have to avoid so yes we all we a lot of us have grown up without fathers a lot of us have grown up with our in not in a loving situation a lot of us have been betrayed we've been hurt we've been let down but we can go on we get up as bob marley says dust yourself off and you start all over again it's not the end of the world it really isn't and the sooner that you identify what's hurting you what's making you angry what's making you upset what's not allowing you to commit what's making you afraid to commit sometimes because your father hasn't been there you feel abandoned so you feel that everybody who comes into your life is going to abandon you and so you stay you stay in the background you don't want to commit and it's worse if you've been abandoned afterwards worse if somebody's left you and you don't know why and that's reinforcing that fear of abandonment so you don't want to commit so you stay on the sidelines so it is a lot there is a lot of work to be done but the first thing to do is to look at your life see what's hurting don't put a band-aid over it but get to the root and see what you can do about it and if it is somebody like i said sit them in the chair tell them about their but what what's it not and you know the fact that they're not there you'll you'll be surprised what it does to you you really will be surprised do that and yeah and hopefully you'll turn around and then you'll stop you know people stop bitching and they'll stop um, criticizing people when people criticize others and put people down it's because in, they've got self-hatred there's something inside themselves that they don't like so they lift themselves up by putting other people down so when you find yourself criticizing someone ask yourself what is it about me that we, that, that that person reminds me of what is it about that person that is in me and you know you won't be able to notice it straight away but from you put the question in there over time you'll realize that there is something in that person that you recognize in yourself and you don't like it so yes we've got a lot of healing to do we've all got a lot of wounds i hope that this is useful for those of you who are looking at it and yeah i might do something i might expand it a little bit but there again i think this is enough for now Bye.